My name is Carl Wierks. I'm an orthopedic surgeon from Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is a video demonstrating a toggle stitch technique using the 2.4 millimeter peak push lock anchors. We're in a right hip and the scope is through the anterior lateral portal. So you can see the femoral head off to the right, psoas recess here. So we're looking up at about the 12 o'clock position now. And we have a uh, slotted cannula coming in through a mid anterior portal. I've done an acetabuloplasty in preparation of the labral repair. First thing we'll do here is drill three holes. So for the last stitch here, we're gonna use the suture tape to allow to pass that through the more degenerative aspect of the labrum that allows more surface area. The advantage of the 2.4 push locks compared to the 2.9 push locks. It's a smaller diameter, so it allows for easier placement around the acetabulum, particularly medially and laterally when they're, where the acetabulum thins. And there's also less depth of drilling, and so there's going to be less risk of puncturing the acetabulum during drilling and placement of the anchor. I typically prefer to drill all, pre-drill all three holes. So we're loading a O fiber wire here through the labral scorpion, and we're making the ends offset just slightly so that if the scorpion does fray the suture when passing uh, that part won't be involved in the repair. So we'll secure the suture and then this is coming in through the skid through the mid anterior portal. It's like a full thickness bite through the labrum at the chondrolabral junction. So right now we have the suture looped around the labrum. Uh, we have the two free ends here in my left hand and a loop in my right hand. And for the toggle stitch, we're going to pass just one of the limbs through the loop and then pull it down into the joint to tighten that around the labrum. And what happens is that loop will provide enough tension that it'll allow us to roll the labrum. And again, you can see that hitch area and I'll just pull a little bit on my left hand to roll that to the back, back of the labrum. But then that gives us enough control here. In this case, I'm going to put more attention in my right hand now to do kind of roll the labrum out or deflect it a little bit. And then I'll hold that tension as I pass the sutures through the eyelet of the anchor. So now we're bringing the anchor into the joint after the suture tails have been passed through the eyelet. What I wanted to show here is once you get the eyelet docked, and what I can do is grab each suture tail independently. And I usually brace my thumbs here against the tines, but we still have some control here over how the labrum is going to sit. And then we can just secure it right there. And again, you don't see any drag with these 2.4 peak anchors. And I like using the O fiber wire for the same reason. I was using heavier suture in the past and I tended to see more drag with the bigger, larger gauge suture. So this is the labrum after three sutures with 2.4 push locks. For the demonstration, we're also going to do another suture tape more laterally where there's an area of more substantial labrum to show that rolling effect again. I made that drill pilot hole about as far lateral as I felt like I could, especially coming through this portal. The other option would be to switch portals coming through the anterior lateral portal, but I can also cheat a little bit and put the suture in further laterally than where I drilled. The labral scorpion is nice here just because it's minimally traumatic to the labral tissue, so we can pass the suture there at the chondrolabral junction with almost no footprint left. It does a nice job of just leaving uh, the labral tissue intact and giving us maximum amount of repair. So I have a loop two independent sutures. I'm going to just grab one of the sutures here, pass it through the loop, and then pull that around the labrum. And I'll pull with my left hand to bring that crossover area to the back of the labrum. I like this view here when we're adjusting the tension. And it also shows here now that I can independently roll that labrum. And then I get that to where I like it and just hold that tension with my left hand as we pass the sutures through the eyelet of the anchor. Okay, so we have the 2.4 peak push lock going in with suture tape. So we have the suture tape uh, through the eyelet of the anchor. We can dock that eyelet into the pilot hole. We'll independently tension too. We still have a little bit of room to here to play with the deflection or rolling of the anchor. Okay, so once you're happy with the anchor placement, then it can be inserted without any further tightening of the suture. But the advantage of this toggle suture technique is that it allows for just a bit more fine tuning about how the labrum is positioned on the acetabular rim to try to prevent over deflection 
of the labrum. Knotless technique is nice too, just because there's no potential for the knots to come undone. You have less suture burden. So we've done a four anchor repair here. The peripheral sutures are the suture tape, and then the two central anchors are an O fiber wire suture. But using the toggle stitch technique, the advantage is that it allows one more layer of control in terms of how the labrum is sitting and allows more of an anatomic repair of the labrum. So we've restored the labrum back to an anatomic position, confirmed that we've reestablished a suction seal, and then I would move on to addressing any cam deformity in the peripheral compartment.